And we are just a day away from NBA free agency. And today, the deadline for James Harden to either opt in or decline his $35.6 million player option and become a free agent. 76ers president of basketball operations, Daryl Morey, says the franchise has an interest in bringing Harden back. All right, I got my NBA guys here. And, Wendy, I got to get with you. Give us the very latest on the decision James Harden is thinking about right now. Yeah, so right now the Sixers and Harden have been in conversations about what his future would look like and also about how a contract might be structured. Certainly he might have interest in looking and talking to other teams starting tomorrow, but the Sixers, obviously they could give a max contract. And if, and if he doesn't opt into his contract by midnight tonight, I think there's a chance he's going to get a significant raise. But I do think there's a reason why there's some interest in having him look at keeping this option. Joel Embiid's contract increases by over 40% this year. His Supermax kicks in. And by the way, he earned it. He won the MVP. Right. His contract goes up by 40%. They have to sign Tyrese Maxey this offseason. I mean, they really should extend him. So the, the Sixers have to manage their money going forward. If Harden, you remember last year, Daryl Morey and Harden emerged on July 1st with this plan that nobody thought was going to happen, which included a pay cut that helped the Sixers. Let's see if they can negotiate something that keeps him here, but maybe keeps his salary below the max, even if it can go out for four years if they need to do that. So I think Harden is probably going to be back with the Sixers. The drama to me is how the contract might be structured. So, again, it, it boils down to the years. And the one thing we've talked about, especially with James Harden, you look at it. Look, he put up two 40-point performances yep. in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. Didn't score in the fourth quarter at all in games five, six, or seven. In those other five games shot 25% from the field, averages 13 points. So if you're the Sixers, bringing him back, would it be a huge mistake? Huge mistake depends on what the contract looks like, as Wendy's pointing out, right? Like they have to work out that deal. Because if it is just one year or one plus or pick up the option and one, whatever it is, it's got to be short term. Because at this point in his career, you don't want to get in too, le too long of a contract with James Harden. Look, if you're Daryl Morey, you need to have another star level player with Joel Embiid if you're trying to win a championship. There's really not a lot available to you if you let him walk. What other options do you really have or legitimately have? You could try to get Fred Van Vliet in some way possible and him and Maxi in the backcourt. You could have that. But is that really something that sizzles? The East is kind of weird right now with the way things are going with some of the teams at the top, with the Bucks and some uncertainty there, new coach, the Celtics and a move that they made that took some heart out. So if you're the Sixers, you want to be in. I just don't know, legs. I don't know about it all in because I don't know if I trust James Harden with that much guarantee down the road. Well, I definitely don't trust him. And first of all, I think it's amazing that it took a perfect game to keep us from leading the show with James Harden. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it was going to take something special overnight. Yeah. But look, I look at it as a necessary evil. That's how I would describe it. They don't have a choice, right? You, you, you almost have to offer him what it's going to take. Now look, if he were to opt out and leave and the Sixers did everything they could to resign him, then in a lot of ways the pressure's taken off of, of, of the front office because that's just James Harden's decision. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to be in Philadelphia. I think it's the best place for him to be to have a chance to legitimately contend and win. And if you're Philadelphia right now, you're that close and you've got this kind of talent on your roster and you can't really replace the talent of a James Harden, even though I believe it's mostly a regular season talent. Yes. He is still a yes. great regular season player. He's going to help you position yourself probably in the top three in the Eastern Conference. You're going to have a high seed. Can you get past those other top teams in the East with James Harden and the way that he plays in pressure moments in the postseason? And not just last year. You could go back to the year before, yes. the way that he played at the end of the season against Miami. You could go back to Houston, Houston. and pick out some moments. This three. is a long Many. track record of this. Right. So I, I don't believe that's going to change. But I just don't think Philly has much of a choice but to try to keep this thing together. What's the, what's the ceiling, then, for the Sixers? If they bring Harden back, you, obviously you have Embiid and getting past that second round. Yeah, you can get there because they should have gotten there this year. Let's be honest. I mean, that series should have been won. You had a home game up 3-2 against the Celtics team that really was playing uninspired basketball. You could have won. Then Jason Tatum gets hot, he wins a game, and now you go to a game seven. So, to me, the East is so weird, as I said, with what's at the top, that the opportunity is there for at least try to get to an NBA Finals, which they haven't done since 2001. So, it would actually be a celebration just to get even that far. But to win a title, 
As you just said, Legs, I don't know if James Harden has that in his DNA to take you that What's far. What's the ceiling, Legs? I, I think if they're a second-round team again, I, I really Eight. do. Now, look, I know right now there's some uncertainty with Milwaukee and, you know, with Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton, and we're going we're to kind of wait and see what happens there. If those guys leave, what do they, what do they replace them with? Still got Giannis. I'm a big believer in 34 in Milwaukee, and I actually think what Boston did has been, is worth the risk, right? This team's been to four conference finals since Jason Tatum got there. They've been to one finals. They're taking a different approach. They can, they're going to be able to play big without sacrificing offense by adding Porzingis. I like the move. I think Philadelphia still sits there as we sit here today behind both of those teams in the regular season, and then you've still got Miami. Miami, so you got them fourth. Third or fourth, depending on – these teams aren't playing for the regular season, a lot of them. That's the problem. Like, right. in terms of seeding, yeah. Philadelphia could be in the top, in the top yeah, two or three. We can't judge this until I'm April. talking about this series. They're going to have to play one of those teams in the second round. Yep. I wouldn't pick them to win that series. The eight-time All-Star set to hit the open market tomorrow when free agency begins. After three and a half seasons in Brooklyn, Irving, of course, was traded to the Mavericks, failed to make the playoffs for the first time in four years after tanking down the stretch. Here's our Ramona Shelburne on Kyrie. He intends to take meetings when free agency opens. Now, they have wide, widely held expectations that he returns to Dallas. Now, what's important to Kyrie Irving? From what I'm told, he wants to find a place where he can spend the rest of his career, a place that feels like home. Okay, so, Wendy, uh, what's the market? in your hearing for Kyrie Irving. It's just it's the thing. There's not much of a market. The teams that have cap space, Orlando, Indiana, Detroit, Houston, these are not realistic landing spaces for Kyrie Irving. He can take meetings with teams that don't have space, <laughs> and, and, and there can be <laughs> negotiations on a sign-and-trade, but that would imply Dallas wants to say goodbye. They don't. The only team in this offseason where I thought Kyrie would have a chance to go that would be outside Dallas, really, would be L.A. And Rob Polinka has taken out a billboard in Los Angeles that says, we are not going to be a cap space <laughs> team. We are re-signing our players. There is no open market for Kyrie Irving. It doesn't mean he's not a desired player. There's just not avenues for him to go. I don't see where he's going besides Dallas. I think it's really, again, it comes down to, like with Harden, they need Harden, Harden needs them, Kyrie needs Dallas, Dallas needs Kyrie. It's just a matter of the terms of the deal. So they're bidding against themselves? Well, that's the thing. Like, you know, I, honestly, I'm not seeing a whole lot of markets for a lot of players in this, con in this, in this, in this free agency. I'm not maybe five or six guys, other than, like, minimum players, mm. who are honestly going to have real multiple bids. So it begs the question here, Alan, how competitive will my – and I love the Mavericks. How competitive will they be if they re-sign Kyrie? You look at it, he played 20 games with the Mavericks. Mm -hmm. They were 8-12. and 12. I know he averaged the most points in the fourth quarter, but you were 8-12, and 12, yeah. and you tanked and didn't make the playoffs. Well, I mean, and you wonder, you know, the, this, the idea of what he's putting out there about rest of his career and a place that feels like home, if that's just a message to the Dallas Mavericks is make sure this is a four-year deal. Make sure I'm getting long-term security here. And that's, what he's, that's why he's talking about home and a place I can stay. Because what has he done? He's done a lot of bouncing around. And why has he bounced around? Because Boston had had enough of him. Brooklyn had enough of him. I mean, Brook Brooklyn would rather be irrelevant without Kevin Durant than deal with him. So he's in one situation in Dallas where they want him there, and he's trying to get as much length out of the contract as possible. But you don't want to do that because you got to worry about how the fit is with Luka. Will they be competitive? Uh, listen, I think the sample size is too small so far. The one thing I do know is they're going to be a terrible defensive team on the perimeter. Is that good enough in this league to win consistently? There's no question the offensive talent is there. Yep. You know, they're, they're, they're sort of like two guys, and, and I've described Tatum and Brown this way sometimes, independent of each other, their greatness, right? It's not like they're working together and they're doing things that involve the two of them to make things tough on defense. It's literally one guy at a time each trip up the floor. That's kind of the way they play. But they've answered the question about having offense with Lucas on the bench. That was a major problem for this team. They've answered that with Kyrie. They didn't play enough together last year for me to definitively conclude, and based on who's around them, is this team good enough to contend with the two of them in the Western Conference? I I'm very concerned about their defense and their leadership. But I got to see more of them offensively. They might be so good. Eventually, yeah. they can make up for a lot of those things. They certainly need more help, though, in Dallas. It's on for fact or fiction. Alan Hahn, Blazers making a mistake by keeping Damian Lillard. Is that fact or fiction? It's fact because when the season starts, he'll be 33 years old, 11 seasons, over 800 games he'll be playing into next season. 
And if there was ever a time where you can own the offseason with the key piece that everybody would be clamoring for, this would be the time. You want to rebuild the franchise? You do it with a franchise player that has value now. Tim Legler. Kevin Durant, the Suns. They've got enough now to compete with the Nuggets. That fact or fiction? That's a fact. You know, the word compete has a broad meaning, right? <laughs> so, and I'm going to take advantage of that. All right? Compete, yes, they can compete. They won two games from a year ago with virtually no depth. So now you add a Bradley Beal to, to the equation. And what this means is at no point do you have to have less than two superstars on the court as scorers, right? That wasn't the case even last year when Chris Paul went down. One of those guys was off the court at times. Wasn't enough against a great Denver team. They do have enough now to be in the mix with Denver. Allen, LeBron, Lakers won't make it back to the conference finals. Factor or fiction? Oh, that's fiction. Come on now. I mean, hang a banner. It was a competitive sweep in the conference <laughs> finals, all right? That's what it is because it was a 24-point point differential in four games. That's one of the lowest all-time in a sweep. Yes, it was a sweep. Yes, it was a loss. But they got there, and LeBron wasn't 100%. You run this thing back, they're going to be back there again. Guys, I want you to take a look at something, because LeBron's son, Bronny, was in the 2024 mock draft going at number 17 to the Atlanta Hawks, which LeBron posted on Instagram saying, quote, well, ATL, shawty, the James gang will be pulling up, end quote. And Hawks guard Trey Young saw the message and then replied, quote, talk soon. Um, listen here, Wendy. Tampering. <laughs> I just know it is well known LeBron wants to play with Bronny when he gets to the NBA in the upcoming season. So could this this upcoming season be the last one with LeBron in L.A.? If there's any player in the history of the NBA who would turn down a $50 million player option, right. which is what LeBron has for next season, it would be him. <laughs> um, but he, <laughs> I guys, think he, could afford he it. keeps going. So he, he's trying to keep himself under control because at the end of the season, he said, just because it's my dream to play with LeBron, it doesn't mean it's his dream. Mm -hmm. I have to support what he wants. And then he did this. He, yeah, he just yeah, yeah. He, he wants this so bad. He's trying to you know, hold it under control. The thing about it is, Jonathan Gavoni and Jeremy Wu, our draft mock draft guys who put Bronny at 17, these guys are really good. They crushed the mock draft that they put on a year ago. Now, we're a long way from that draft. The Lakers don't control their first round pick next year. New Orleans controls it. They can either take it or they can push it back a year. Hmm. So if Bronny does end up being a first round pick, you know, mm -hmm. and LeBron really wants to follow through with that. Yes. It's an interesting development. Let's leave it at that. Well, listen, he's all about legacy now. At this point, he's got the championships. He's got the all-time leading score. It's all about doing things that no one has ever done. And he's talked about. He wants to play with Bronny in his first year. Legs, what do you think? Your take on this potentially being LeBron's last season in L.A.? I will first look. I don't do mock drafts, but I look at a lot of them. I looked at six of them last night. Bronny James was in six different spots in each of those from 16 to 28. And you know what that tells me? Nobody knows where Bronny James is going to be drafted. We, we have to wait and see. Maybe he plays himself higher. Maybe he plays himself out of the first round in his one year. So what that means is the number of teams that he could end up on makes it interesting because, it, you know, Allen's point, I, don't, I wouldn't put the Lakers in the conference finals next year, but they're certainly right there. I think they're a top four team in the West, so they're definitely in the mix to contend. That would probably be the case the year after. So would LeBron James really be willing to, you know, to forego that, a chance to potentially be on another team that could make a run maybe to the finals at the very end of his career to go play with Bronny? I guess maybe that's even a question for you to answer. Would he really be willing to walk away from a situation that you could be in like a top two team, potentially in the Western Conference, to go play with Bronny? By the way, who knows where that would be in the state of the organization he would be going to? Well, here's, here's the interesting thing. He really, thing. really wants it. I was going to say, he really <laughs> wants it. And because for the Lakers, and Wendy, I know you've been talking a lot about Anthony Davis and an extension that uh, he could be looking at. Lower. Three years, I think, what, 167? I, that's not a foregone conclusion that yeah. the Lakers do that. I think if you look at the Lakers' future, the Bronny situation is fascinating. It makes you go, huh, that's going to be interesting to watch that. The Anthony Davis situation is way more important and interesting and now – he can't have this discussion until August. It's not something that Lakers have a ton of business to do in the next seven days. $167 million, that's $55, $56 million a year. That is not an absolute, bam, do it, no-brainer. Mm -hmm. That is something that is may not be a simple decision. Also, maybe they don't offer three. Maybe they offer it less than that. And is Anthony Davis, how does Anthony Davis react if they don't offer the full thing? So to me, one of the most interesting things this summer 
is the guys who have extension options in front of them. Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Giannis later on has a possibility of an extension. That's where the real drama might be this summer. So if you're looking at the Lakers, this could be interesting not only for the simple fact that it could be LeBron's last season, considering with Bronny coming, but even with Anthony Davis, you got a real situation here in L.A. Yeah, which is why you have to do what Rob Polinka and company are doing right now with this organization, which is not loading up or going after other stars and giving up more future draft picks and giving up cap space and putting yourself – really in cap hell, you got to have flexibility and maintain it just for the possibility. Like, be prepared for it. Don't anticipate LeBron leaving because, look, first of all, we'll see how this draft goes next year. There could be teams that try to trade up to get him because they think they'll also get LeBron. How about if Portland ends up getting the pick and they get him? Now they get LeBron. Now all of a sudden, Damian Lillard has LeBron James on his team. Like, you know, so there's all kinds of scenarios that could play out. But there also could be places where LeBron's like, yeah, I don't want to play there. And so he doesn't leave. But the Anthony Davis of it all, to me, starts the conversation, not what LeBron going to do. Because if you don't think LeBron James is a guarantee to stay there after this season, why would you commit more than one year or more to Anthony Davis, who over 30, he, he's too really young good. to look that he's old. He's really good. <laughs> he is really good. But is he a franchise player that you continue to build with? Or is he a guy that, let's be honest, a big man who, while he puts up numbers, continues to break down? And once again, it's a commitment, and we're seeing it all over the NBA. How many commitments are our teams going to make this summer, whether it's Kyrie, James Harden, and it's going to be Anthony Davis later this summer, that you're going to do it, but you're going to wince while you're signing the contract? So I think the big question is, will LeBron James be next to him? Because the thought of it being Anthony Davis' team without the leadership of LeBron James to help you know, uplift him and pick him up, that's a scary prospect. Well, that's the Pelicans. Right. That's, that's, that's <laughs> a scary prospect. If you're going to go forward with that and say, okay, LeBron, for whatever reason, LeBron leaves, go play a Bronny. Who knows where he ends up? And now it's AD's team without that strong presence. Now what do you have? And where is AD if that at this stage of his career with some of the inconsistencies that he's shown, the propensity to miss chunks of time during the regular season with right. injuries, right? And now you're just handing it all over to him. I, that to me, that's a scary prospect for the Lakers organization going forward if that's what you're left with. But it all comes down to LeBron. And the uncertainty about where Bronny James could be. He could be in a place where you have no chance to yeah. contend. Is that, I mean, I know you want to play with your son. I get it. I, and I totally understand that, by the way. But LeBron also is about rings and competing and legacy and mm -hmm. all of those things. Do you, is that what how you want it to end when you're in a situation where you still are good enough to be relevant in the Western Conference? And that is the key to whether how I feel about Anthony Davis going forward with the Lakers. Two things. I honestly believe LeBron cares more about playing with Bronny than he would about getting another ring. Secondly, mm -hmm. what are the consequences if AD doesn't extend? Like, why does AD feel if he doesn't get an extension offer? And the other thing is, Bronny may not be ready to come out after a year. Right. He may want to play a second year at USC. Well, that's why, again, you don't anticipate it, but you prepare. And the other thing you can always do is trade for the pick. And you yourself as the Lakers. If you don't have that pick, if the Pelicans aren't going to swap, then you yourself figure out a way. It's not like this is a lottery pick, right? Bronny is not projected I don't to be know. a lottery pick. No, player. not at the moment. I don't Not at I the moment, know. right. So if, if he's outside the lottery, you can find your way into – a later first-round pick, get him, and then LeBron doesn't have to go anywhere, and they'd all be happy with that. What are what are the, what are you hearing the feelings, Lakers with Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis expecting from the Lakers? That's to be determined. I don't know. I think the Lakers have they have got like a bunch of very interesting high 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 stress important negotiations in the next seven days, mm. and they can't even talk with Anthony Davis about it until in August. So. Stay tuned. Mm, that's a, it's a really interesting thing. You've got to break. make a decision yeah. in August on a player that you need to know if he's in shape in October. That's, that's the scary place that the Lakers are at right now. You've got to make a decision in August not knowing what am I getting when he shows up in October because as we know with him, he's not ever in the elite shape he needs to be to be as to hit his potential. To be the franchise player he's supposed to be next to LeBron. So this is a $167 million decision that you don't know is right or wrong until the season well, starts. Well, they could offer him – it's not 167 or bust. Like, they could offer him less. Mm -hmm. But that means he's going to take it, though. 
Yes. Yeah. And the, the, exactly. So this is a really important season for the Lakers. This is this oh, is crucial. crucial. Well, we, we knew that all along when these when Every they were paired up at the stages of their career with their yeah. ages yeah. and with Anthony Davis's injury history. We knew that going in. Like you have a finite window to try to get this done. Now LeBron is defying all logic, right? He with the way he looks physically mm -hmm. and to still some nights be the best athlete on the floor doesn't make any sense this late into his career. So he's probably surpassed that that expectation for all of us that he's been this durable. And this good still this yeah. late into his career, but we all knew going in, you got a certain period of time to try to get this done, and they do have one ring. Question is, are they going to be able to really play on the biggest stage and have another shot at it while these two guys are together? You're right. We'll find out. All right. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.